Hello friends, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to see firefighting tank design for your tank pipe system. So here we have a G plus 4 building with two risers and each risers have 2.5 inch landing walls. First, we will see how to find out the fire pump flow for this arrangement. Then we will go for the tank sizing. So in this project, let's, let's assume that we have a fire pump room here. So we have the fire pumps located here. So this fire pump is supplying the water to this two riser. So as per NFEA 14 that we have to consider 250 GPM flow for each landing wall. So this is the last riser or we can call a residual riser or remote riser because this is located far away from the fire pump. So for this last riser, even though you have 20, 30 or 50 landing wall, we have to consider maximum two landing wall from the last riser. So we have to consider only the remotest location of two landing walls. So each landing wall with 250 GPM plus 250 GPM. So total 500 GPM we have to consider from this last riser or remote riser. After that coming to the next riser, we have two conditions we have to follow here. First in this case, we have to see the floor area. So the, for the each floor area for this project is 75,000 square feet. So we have a special rule to consider here so as per NFA 14, we have to follow this rule. That is the minimum flow rate for additional standpipe. So we saw we have there are two standpipe in the project. So first we consider 500 GPM from the remotest location of standpipe. Now we are going to the next standpipe. That means the additional standpipe. So when we go for the additional standpipe, we have to consider 250 GPM if the area is not exceeding 80,000 feet square. Suppose the floor area, I mean we have the different floors. Suppose the floor area is exceeding it means any one of the floor area if it is exceeding 80,000 feet square then we have to consider 500 GPM for the next standpipe I mean the additional standpipe. So coming back to our system we have considered 500 GPM from the remotest standpipe and coming to the next standpipe so here the floor area for the each floor is 75,000 square feet so we don't need to consider eight uh, we don't need to consider 500 GPM since the flow since the area is not exceeding 80,000 square feet so in this case we have to consider only one landing wall that is for 250 GPM so the total fire pump flow for our project is this is 500 GPM from this one and 250 GPM from this case so total 750 gpm is the fire pump size for this project in the same project if the area is let's say consider like uh, if the area is 82 000, 82 000 square feet then we have to consider two standpipe for the last that is no change for this one and coming to the next standpipe we have to consider two landing wall instead of one since the area is exceeding 80,000 square feet in this case the fire pump flow will be 1000 gpm Let's assume we have one more uh, condition for the same project. We have the last standpipe and we have another standpipe. And in addition to that one, I'm going to consider one more standpipe for the same project. Now how we will consider the fire pump flow. So in this condition, the last residual standpipe, the same as it is, we have to consider 500 GPM from 250 plus 250, 500 GPM. Coming to the next standpipe, here in our project, the area is 75,000 square feet. So we have to consider only one landing wall. So 500 plus 250, 750 GPM. Coming to the third one, here also we have to consider only one, st one landing wall. Even though we have multiple landing walls, we have to consider only one residual uh, landing wall. So this is 250, uh, 250 GPM. This is 250 GPM. And here also we have here 500 GPM. So 500 plus 250 plus 250. We have total 1000 GPM is the pump flow. So up to what extent we can go like this? The answer for this question is maximum 1250 GPM we can go for the standpipe. If your project doesn't have the spingler building, spingler system. Suppose in your project, if you have the spingler system or spingler building, then you can go maximum 1000 GPM. You don't need to go 1250 GPM. So 1250, if your project does not have spingler system, if your project has spingler system as well as standpipe system, the maximum flow is 1000 GPM you have to consider. So suppose in the same project, you have one more riser. So what you can do, 500 GPM from here, 250 GPM, 250 GPM and 250 GPM. So maximum 1250 GPM you have to consider. So even though if you have additional uh, standpipe, let's say that you have one standpipe, two, uh, three, four and five. So in this case, the last standpipe, I, I will write here again. So now you can see the last standpipe 500 GPM. Before last, this is 250 GPM. Again here 250, 
here 250 so total it is already 500 750 1000 1250 this standby we don't need to consider because the maximum value is 1250 gpm if your project does not have sprinkler system so this is the way we can find out the fire pump flow capacity now we are going to find out the storage tank sizing for the firefighting system. So this table I have taken from NFA 13. So here you can see host team allowance and water supply duration requirement for the hydraulically calculated system. So here different hazards they have given light hazard, honor hazard and extra hazard. Additionally we have we can see here the duration of the water storage holding capacity that is for the light hazard it is 30 minutes. For the RNA hazard, it is 60 to 90 minutes and extra hazard, it is 90 to 120 minutes. We have to follow for the tank sizing. Now we will see one simple example how to find out the hazard from different application. Then we will go for the tank sizing. As per NFA 13, area within a building will be defined as light hazard, RNA hazard group 1, group 2, extra hazard group 1 and group 2. So there are 5 types we have. Coming to the special category, we can call as a commodity class which has class 1 to 4 and also plastic groups which has class group A to C. So this condition is applied to some special project like warehouses. Normally for the building, we normally it normally comes under this 5 category. So overall NFA 30 uh, means classify this to arrangement using quantity of combustibles and rate of heat release. Based on these two conditions, we can define whether the condition is like light hazard or ordinary hazard or extra hazard. So now we will see one example. So in NFE 13, we can see a detailed example. For example, in the light hazard, it means like the items like searches, uh, the museums, libraries, educational facilities, restaurant seating area. So all these areas which is non-industrial non building with low fire load. So all these buildings will come under light hazard. And coming to the RNSR group 1, we can see that training and industrial building with medium fire load. So this is important, medium fire load. For example, the bakeries, uh, beverage manufacturing, then uh, dairy product manufacturing, laundry. So these are the different building will come under RNSR group 1. Similar to that one, if you go to RNSR group 2, you can see some uh, arrangement like uh, uh, chemical plants, uh, food mills, horse tables, paper and pulp mills. So these are things will come under RNSR 2. And coming to SSR 1, industrial buildings where material processed have a high fire load. So if you have the medium fire load, that will come under RNSR group, uh, RNSR. If you have the high fire load and, are, and also it has the capability of quickly spreading or intense fire, then it will come under SSR 1. So mainly if you see like like uh, aircraft hangar, a uh, die casting machine, uh, metal extruding. So these are the things will come under Estrasar group 1. So similar to that one, Estrasar group 2, which has a high spreading fire. They have given some example like uh, flammable liquid spraying areas and asphalt shattering areas. So these are things will come under uh, Estrasar group 2. So here just for your understanding, I have given few examples. We have a conference room. A heat exchanger room, portable water irrigation pump room which is normally a part of all the projects and we have the office area and we have a store room in a residential apartment. So first you can see this conference room and office room these are the non-industrial type of building. So these two will come under light hazard and coming to the next arrangement this is the industrial type arrangement but if you see the fire rating they, it means we don't have that much uh, uh, arrangement to have high level of fire. So heat exchanger room, portable water irrigation pump room this all will come under ordinary hazard and coming to the storage room so storage storage room we have to see what kind of storage material we have whether we have the paint material or we have any flammable liquids or something like that so it's, it's a residential apartment so we don't have a highly flammable item in this arrangement still it will not come under light hazard because we have some storage material uh, in this arrangement so uh, for the very clarity purpose we have to see what is exactly stored inside the residential apartment so so if you see the answer for all this question, as I told, conference room and office room is non-industrial building. So this both are in the light hazard. So this arrangement we have, we have, it's like an industrial room, but uh, there is no chance that uh, highly spreadable fire will happen at this room. So it comes under RNSR group 1, all the mechanical rooms will come under RNSR group 1 except the fire pump room because in the fire pump room we have the diesel tank. Because of the diesel tank, it will not come under RNA hazard, it will go to extra hazard. And we have a storeroom also, so storeroom is a residential building, so we are not installing very high flammable liquids. So it comes under RNA hazard group 1. 
so let's assume that we did a project stand pipe system so it is the light as a so we are going to proceed with that one so in our project it was like a 750 gpm fire pump flow and it is a light as a so i'm going to consider 30 minutes duration from the nfa 13 table so here you can see the tank capacity is equal to 750 gpm that is a fire pump flow and multiply with the 30 minutes duration so the total firefighting tank capacity is 22500 gallons this gallon i'm going to convert to meter cube to find out the diameter of the tank so here the available light available height in the site we have to verify so in our project we have 3.8 meter tank is located in the basement area so the maximum height I, I got the limitation now from this limitation I'm going to find out the length and width and other parameter I want to consider here so since the tank is RCC tank we need to provide 600 by 600 mm side access because for example this is your basement level and i have the a tank located like this so if if you want to do any maintenance the people has to people have to assess inside so we have to provide the side entry here so the people can assess from the outside to inside of the tank so this side entry we are normally providing minimum 600 by 600 mm some project is like we are providing 700 by 700 mm so in this example i consider minimum 600 by 600 mm side assess we are providing at this point so the side assess point is clear after the side assess we have one more very technical uh, point we have to see that is a free board free board means there is a area where we don't we must not have the water because sometimes the flow to all we have to install in this free board area so they should we should have some clearance in the free board area normally for the projects we are considering the free board area 300 to 500 mm as a free board and also we have we have to provide the side opening so this both dimension we have to consider when we go for the calculation so considering these two we have the total height 3.8 meter minus uh, 600 mm that is for the side access and 500 mm i consider the free board so total 1.1 meter i have to uh, remove from this value so we will get 2.7 meter this is the water depth so from the total tank height we need to find out the water depth now we got 2.7 meter and we have one more issue with this arrangement normally if you see the firefighting tank inside the firefighting tank we have an arrangement called as an anti vortex plate so to avoid the turbulent flow which is coming to the fire pump so we have to provide the anti vortex plate inside the tank so if you see the distance in this one there will be some minimum distance we have to keep from the finished floor level of the tank to the bottom of the anti water spray so this distance normally 50 gp 50 mm to 100 mm different sizes will come so we have to coordinate with the manufacturer for this arrangement so normally i we consider 75 mm for this distance so 75 mm is are equal to 0 0.075 meter we have to consider now this value also we need to remove from the total value to get the actual water depth for this project so 2.7 meter minus 0 0.075 we will get 2.625 meter so that is the actual water level from the total tank height so the tank tank area is equal to 85.17 so 85.17 is the meter cube value we just got from the earlier slides so divided by 2.625 you will get the total tank area of 32.44 meter square now we need to find out the length and width from this one so available with uh, width in the site based on the coordination with the architectural team is 7 meter because after 7 meter we have some electrical room so we cannot uh, we have to keep some clearance between that one so maximum available width is 7 meter so i kept a 6 meter in this area so the tank length will be 32.44 divided by 6 meter it is 5.4 meter so 5.4 meter we have to make to the round off to the next value so the final tank dimension is 6 meter into 5.5 meter 5.4 i consider to 5.5 meter and multiply with the 3.8 3.5 5, meter is the total height of the uh, water storage tank in that 3.8 meter height only the available water is for this limit only 2.625 meter so this is how we are normally finding out the tank dimension for any project so thank you for watching the video we will see you again with another interesting topic